Rogue Blood Roll, aka Mega Blitz. In today's video, we're going to be looking at my favorite Rogue deck to play in our current format. I feel like this deck has a lot of potential now that Path to the Peak is gone, and we've gotten certain cards like a Specs in the format to finally be able to surpass that 300 damage that this deck was normally capped to. So finally being able to deal with Gardevoir EX and Charizard EXs in the format, I feel like this deck has a lot of untapped potential. So let's jump right in. To that deck list. Oh, ready? Here we are at that deck list. Zorark V Star. Now I went on a pretty crazy win streak with this exact 60 here. I went on a eight-game win streak climbing the TCG Live ranked ladder with this list here. So starting us off with Zorark V Star with this ability Phantom Star during a turn, you may discard your hand and draw seven cards. So it basically does the exact same thing as Professor's Research. With this attack ticking curse for two colorless energy. 50 times. This attack does 50 damage for each of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. So we're trying to put a bunch of damage counters on all of our Pokemon, so this Ticking Curse of attack does more damage. So we play things like this Gengar here with this Netherworld Agate ability. Once during your turn, this Pokemon is in your discard pile, you might put it onto your bench. If you do, put three damage counters on this Pokemon. And then we also got things like Padov in here, which came out in the new Temporal Forces set with this ability Emergency Evolution. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon's remaining HP is 30 or less, you may search your deck for an Unpheasant or an Unpheasant EX, which a uh, little foreshadowing there with the Unpheasant EX, I like that, and putting put it onto this Padov to evolve it. So we are playing this copy here of Unpheasant with this attack, mostly for opposing wins for two colorless energy, 70 damage. You may put two energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon into their hand. So this card is really good into things like Charizard to be able to just put those energies back into their hand and force them to take turns to have to reattach them. Or even Lugia as well, actually, now that I think about it. We also play Squawk Ability, EX with Squawk and Seize Ability. We play that Squavit for the Nest Dash Ability, so it pairs really nicely with our Burial for Industrious Incisors. Now you're thinking, how do we get damage counters on things? So we play Gape Jaw Bog. Whenever either player puts a basic Pokemon from their hand onto their bench, you put two damage counters on that Pokemon. So benching things like Historian Zorark V, Badoofs, Padoves. We're going to be able to put damage counters on them just naturally. And then we're going to be able to also move these damage counters around so all of our Pokemon can have damage counters on them with damage pump. Move up to two damage counters from one of your Pokemon to your other Pokemon in any way you like. And then, of course, for our A spec of choice here, we got Maximum Belt. Attacks used by this Pokemon that is attached to do 50 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon EX. So... With Zorark V-Star, we are capped at 300 damage. We only play, we play mostly double turbo energy, so minus 20 of that, we're at 280. Put the maximum belt on, we're exactly at 330 damage to deal with Charizard EX. So for the full deck list here, we got four Historian Zorark V, four Historian Zorark V-Star, two Bidoof, two Babarrel, two Gengar, one Padov, one Unpheasant, one Squawk Ability EX, one Squawvet, four Professor's Research, three Iono, three Boss, one Silene, four Ultra Ball, four Trekking Shoes, four Damage Pump, four Capture Number, one Switch, one Super Rod, one Energy Lotto, one Maximum Felt, four Gape Jaw Bog, four Double Turbo Energies, and three Psychic Energies. Alrighty, guys. Let's jump right in to that gameplay. Alrighty, and here we are at that Zorark V-Star gameplay. At our coin flip here, our opponent does pick heads. So in this deck, we want to be going first. We're going to get Tails here. We are going to like to go first or second. We want to go first. We want to be able to evolve Zorark Vs into V-Stars, Badoos into um, Barrels, being able to evolve Padov potentially into Unpheasant, being able to just try to get set up as fast as we can so we can start attacking really quickly. This deck is a bit of a turbo deck if it were, trying to just attack really fast and really early if it can. So starting off here, we're going to have a Zorark V in our active spot. Opening hand's not too bad. Getting a Zorark V-Star, Boss, Iona, Research, Damage Pump, and a Gape Jaw Bog. Our opponent going to have two Iron Crown EXs to start off here. I am going to just put Gape Jaw Bog down and pass. So we're going to hope that our opponent isn't going to be able to pull off any sort of crazy amp you very much or arm press attack on Iron Hands or anything to KO our Zorark V. But they're going to bench down that Mew there. Gate Job Bob is going to trigger, put two damage counters on there. But they had Town Store in the hand, so they could have actually Town Stored to bump Bog and then put down the Mew, so they could have saved that 20 damage counters there. Going to be able to put down that Maridon as well. Attach Electric Energy to the Maridon. Future Booster Energy Capsule to retreat out of the Iron Crown into the Maridon. Going to be able to Town Store here as well this turn. But they're going to restart first, so now they're going to be able to find that Town Store to get... A future booster energy capsule to put it on to that Maridon there. So now this Maridon is going to be doing 100 damage. 
20 damage because that future boost energy capsule is on it and then iron crown ex is going to make it do 20 more for each iron crown so putting it up to a nice 100 damage so we're in a position where i'm going to be able to town store here get that maximum belt out of my deck and the reason i do that is i don't really have a need for it maximum belt is only really in the deck to be able to deal with gardevoir ex and charizard mostly so just turning the deck and throwing it on there isn't going to hurt us so we're going to play the iono here we're going to be able to bench a Zoroark, bench another Zoroark, bench the Padub, Ultra Ball away, Squawkabilly, and the other Ultra Ball to grab myself Gengar. And the reason I grab Gengar here is because I'm going to be able to use that Phantom Star ability with that Zoroark V-Star to be able to discard my hand and draw seven cards. So discard that Gengar, draw seven, going to be able to get into a Gape Jaw Bog, bench the Bidoof, put 20 damage counters on that Bidoof here, <clears throat> and then we're going to be able to netherworld gate putting that gengar onto the bench which is going to make it have three damage counters on it and then i'm going to be able to use my damage pump here to be able to move two damage counters off of my hasuian zorark v-star to the padov emergency evolution into the unpheasant which is a pretty good attack in this matchup being able to use that opposing winds attack to put two energies back into my opponent's hand can be pretty nice so really being able to slow them down if we need to so we're just going to pass turn here. We're kind of hoping for a double turbo energy potentially to be able to kale that Mirai done, but that'll be all right. Techno Raider going to discard that electric energy here, find themselves in doing Iron Hands EX, going to trigger Gape Job Bog again, being able to put 20 damage counters on that and do another Iron Hands, another Gape Job Bog trigger, 20 more damage counters on that Iron Hands as well. Going to be able to use Electric Generator here, and then they're going to be able to get some energies onto their Iron Hands. So they're going to put two electric energies onto that Iron Hands EX. Future Booster Energy Capsule to one of the Iron Hands. Heavy Baton to the other one. Super Rod for the one electric energy here. Gonna be able to restart for two cards, put themselves at three in hand here. They're trying to find into another electric generator potentially, so they would be able to maybe get into that Iron Hands, maybe use Arm Press, or maybe even Ampy Very Much or something to try to take a KO on this Zorark V-Star here. So just kind of trying to map out what they want to be doing they're going to use cypher maniacs code breaking here to be able to put find up to two cards and put them on top of your deck in any order you want and then you shuffle the rest um beneath those two you're going to be able to use that sparking strike i think it's what it's called to be able to take a ko on that hasuian zorark v-star so no need for the iron hands that 160 damage with the help of that capsule and double iron crown is going to get the job done so we're at a six four split here we're going to be able to evolve zoroark v into v star we're going to be able to use silene this turn if we want to but i don't feel like i'm going to need it right now so first i want to ultra ball going to be able to find myself into a barrel here but if i silene first then i'm in a position where i might actually be able to try to put some of the stuff back on top but we ended up failing it. So the plan was to be able to try to get like maybe Maximum Bell or maybe a Zoroark V-Star again to be able to put that on top to Industrial Sizers into that. But we ended up getting it anyway. So we're going to be able to evolve, Trekking Shoes, discard that card. They got Gape Job Bog to get into another one here. We're going to have access to that damage pump, but I don't really need it this turn. So we're just going to Ticking Curse for 130 damage to that Maraidon. So now we're at a 5-6 split here. You're going to get Energy Lotto off of my prize cards, being able to look at the top 7, find whatever energy card I want there and put it into my hand. So it's really nice to be able to find double turbo energies because we are capped at only being able to play 4 double turbos in the deck. And usually that's how we're trying to attack with Hasuian Zorark V-Star. We do have Psychic Energies in the deck, so we could attack with Gengar if we need to, or maybe even having to put two of them onto Zorark or something if need be. But Double Turbo Energy is the primary way you'd want to go. Give an Electric Generator here. Put two more Electric Energies to that Iron Hands EX there. So that thing is going to be ready to go. Going to be able to use Arm Press or Ampy very much or anything of that nature. Electric Generator again here. Being able to get some more energy. He's going to get one energy to the other Iron Hands EX. But they have used three Electric Generators. So they got one left in deck at some point in time. Going to retreat out of that Mew into that Iron Hands. Arm Press for 200 damage to our Zorark V-Star here. I'm going to be able to energy lotto, grab myself that double turbo energy, be able to attach it to my other Zorark V-Star here, damage pump, move 
two damage counters off of my Hisuian Zoroark V-Star to the other Zoroark. So, going to be able to get that ticking curse to do some more damage here. Going to be able to bench another Bidoof. Gave Job Bog going to trigger, put 20 damage counters on that as well. So, now we're at 280 damage with this ticking curse attack here. Going to be able to capture Roma, get that Gengar. Just trying to thin the deck a little bit, trying to maybe just get as least get as many cards out of the deck as possible so my draws are just a little bit better later on so we're gonna 280 to that iron hands ex there gonna be able to take a ko putting us at a three four split but first heavy baton gonna be able to move some energies to the other iron hands there so that, that other iron hands ex is gonna be ready to go on that bench gonna be able to retreat out of it this turn and pull off an amp you very much taking three prize cards from our Zoroark V-Star. Putting us at a 3-1 split. One, that does happen. But first, I'm going to be able to draw for turn here. Just kind of contemplating. I'm going to be able to nest ball, which put the Iron Hands down onto that bench there. Is not going to trigger Gabe Jaw Bog because it has to be from your hand, not from the deck. So nest ball, when you do that, it won't trigger Gabe Jaw Bog, which is nice for them. I'm going to be able to get down to one card in hand, be able to retreat out of that Mew into the Iron Hands. Restart, draw two cards, getting up to three in hand again. And I'm in a position where Ambi very much going to be able to take three prize cards, putting us at a 1-3 split. I might be able to come back and take a counter KO with our Zoroark. V-Star will push on a 1-1 one, one split. However, something really important to note is the active Iron Hands has future booster energy capsule on it. So, not Heavy Baton. If it had Heavy Baton, it would be get KO'd. When it would get KO'd, you'd be able to move those energies to a different Pokemon that has a retreat cost of exactly four. But they don't have that. So I'm going to be able to evolve Bidoof into Babero here. I'm going to be able as well to start attaching some energies to things if I want to. So I'm going to attach a Psychic Energy to that Gengar there. And I'm just going to play this Iono. Trying to just disrupt my opponent. Putting him to one card. Get me to three cards in hand here. We're going to be able to Trekking Shoes. Get rid of that Gape Jaw Bog. I don't really need that. Getting into a Squovit. Play the Squovit. Trigger Gape Jaw Bog. 20 damage counters on that. We're going to nest stash here, shuffling our hand, put those cards on the bottom, and then draw one. So we're going to industrious incisors, being able to find into a trekking shoes. Trekking shoes is going to discard that capturing aroma here, getting us into a professor's research. I have no need to play damage pump at all. I could have maybe moved like one damage counter or even two off of that Zoroark. However, I'm in a position where I think we're just going to end up winning because that heavy baton was not on the active iron hand, so was not able to move any energies off of it to any other Pokemon. So we're gonna be able to play Town Store here, attach Electric Energy to the Iron Hands, gonna be able to restart, draw three cards. And I'm like, okay, I'm in a position where you're able to peak acceleration potentially. If you can find Generator, you might be able to get there this turn. So they're gonna be able to Nest Ball, get another Iron Crown down, play a Professor's Research, discarding that Counter Catcher to get a fresh seven cards in their hand here. And they still got one electric generator left because they only got three in the discard pile. Unless that one prize card is the electric generator, it is possible. They're going to be able to attach a future booster, future, future booster energy capsule to that Maride on there. Going to be able to make it so it does more damage and have a free retreat. Town Store going to be able to just shuffle up the deck a little bit. Maybe trying to get a better hit off of that electric generator here. Going to be able to retreat out of that Mew into Maridon. Peak acceleration for 120 damage. Going to be able to just attach some energies to their future Pokemon. Going to be able to just thin the deck a little bit, but it won't matter because I'm going to be able to just counter KO to that Maridon for that ticking curse for 280 damage, taking my last prize card to make a huge comeback in a really close game against future hands. Absolutely incredible. Felt super good. So let's jump right in to that outro. All right, that's going to do it for today's video. Being able to pick up the win there with that absolutely insane Zoroark V-Star deck. And I'll make sure to put the deck list that I played in today's video in the description below. So you guys want to try it out for yourself, you'll be able to. And if you're enjoying the content I've been making so far here on the channel, don't forget to leave a like, smash that subscribe button. I really would appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.